In today's video, I'm going to check out resources and resource mailboxes for a true deep dive on exactly what they are and how they work. Stay tuned. Today's video is sponsored by Robopack, the trend-setting solution for Intune packaging and third-party patch management. And it's free for SMBs and NGOs. Visit them today at Robopack. Com. Hey everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you and a warm welcome to the channel. On today's episode, I'm checking out resources in Microsoft 365 Exchange and Microsoft Outlook. Specifically, things like conference rooms, maybe pieces of equipment that you want to have available for scheduling with your staff. Now, just a quick mention, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, bomb that subscribe button up there, ring that bell and come and join my learning community. And if you've got questions and comments, comments from today's session, or in fact, any of my sessions, as always, get those down below and I'll do my best for you. And finally, if you want to learn more, why not sign up to my Patreon site? Just there, uh, you'll get access to full Microsoft courses, uh, monthly Zoom calls, and lots more details down below. So without any more of the jibber jabber, I think it's about time we jump in and check out resource mailboxes and everything to do with them in Microsoft 365. Enjoy. Now, just before we get started with resource mailboxes, just a quick note about the main landing page here in Microsoft 365. So if you've typed in portal.office.com, you'll notice that it now resolves to this uh, landing page with Microsoft Copilot. And if you want to go into the admin pages, of course, you can go in this portal here Alternatively, I would highly recommend that you just simply go into the portal and type in admin.microsoft.com and it will take you straight to the beloved admin center here. So when we talk about resources, of course, in Microsoft 365, we can create users, we can create groups, we can even have admin roles that look after everyone. But here we have an option called resources. And really, there are two types of resource that you can have a website resource or a web link, uh, which is handy for storage and for sharing files. And you can also have rooms and equipment mailboxes, which is what I'm going to have a look at here. A room and equipment mailbox, you can see that we have a number of resources here. And these can include, for example, meeting rooms here. I've got Adams, Baker and so on. I've also got a company projector here as well. Adding a resource is super simple. So again, I'm just going to simply click on to add resource and you can choose. Is this going to be a room? or is it going to be a piece of equipment? I'm going to choose a piece of equipment and I'm going to call this the minibus, okay? And I can either put in just the name minibus or I can put in a code so I can say minibus 01, for example. Now, because it's a vehicle, you might have a capacity. So in this example, I'm going to say that the capacity of the minibus is 35 people. Where's the location? Where is it stored? So this week I'm in Oslo, so I could say it's in Oslo. Because it's a resource, some resources can also have resource phone numbers as well. So for example, if you're assigning this in the likes of Microsoft Teams. For the purpose of this demo, however, I'm not going to bother with that and I'm just going to save this. Now, a couple of things you'll notice that first of all, you'll get an error message here. And this is really just to do with the timing. Just You just need to save it. Again, there's a slight lag in the UI. So again, you just click on save again and you can see that it's now fine. Also, you get an email address error because this one is already in use. Now, I happen to know that this one is not already in use, but the interesting thing is if you just close this down, it's already created. So if you just close this down, and then just refresh the page a few moments later, you can see that the minibus comes in and in fact, it does have an address. You'll notice that it gives it a category of equipment and we've also got the categories of rooms as well. So what I want to do is let's take a look at some of these resources then. First up, I'm gonna go into the conference room Adams and you can have a look at this and you can see, I can delete this room if I want to. I can see the name. You can change the name of the capacity. You can uh, set, set that. Again, you can click on the edit for the phone number. 
One thing that you can do is you can have delegates in here as well. So if you want to say, you know, you can add in a specific group of users that will always use this kind of resource or this resource mailbox. Remember, resources also have mailboxes in Microsoft 365 and Exchange. So if you wanted kind of a shared mailbox, then this really does add a quite a nice collaborative uh, experience there. Now, because this is stored in Exchange Online, of course, there are also some Exchange settings that you can have a look at. Again, you get the resource mailboxes. So you can see I can add a room mailbox, an equipment mailbox here. And again, you get a, that kind of similar experience. So you can either create the mailbox in Microsoft 365 or you can create the mailbox here in Microsoft Exchange. So coming into the mailbox properties, you can see that we have four tabs in the properties. So general, of course, is just general information, managing the resource details, which is pretty much what I just did. You can also put some in additional information in just for people who are searching through this as well. You might want to add in a contact information. So who's responsible? So for example, um, you know, you can put in the location. So I can say, you know, this mailbox is in Oslo. I can put in the street. I can put in some details. Of course, it's just an object in enter ID. And again, I can just save that if I want to. So now that I've done that, if I flip back, so if you want this mailbox or this resource to be kind of private from your gal or your global address list, of course, you can hide that here as well. So the email address booking. So in terms of booking, you have got a, a number of options here. You can look at the booking delegate settings and also the booking optional settings. And you can see you can either choose your delegate settings and also you can set up things like booking options as well. So first up, if I click onto the booking options, you can see that we get some uh, options. So allow repeated meetings, uh, meeting room, of course. And um, if you don't click on that, then of course you can make changes. Allow schedule only during working hours. For security reasons, you may only want this meeting space within working hours. Again, you may not as well if you if you want that flexibility. Automatically decline meetings outside the limit. In other words, I can book six months in advance. And what's the maximum duration of the meeting? So again, the resource can be used for 24 hours, for example. I can put in some notes here if I want to. So a note to the meeting organizer, I can do that. Of course, the other one is I can have a look at the, bo the booking delegate settings. So again, I can come in here and I can say, okay, in terms of booking requests, I'm going to accept or decline a booking requests automatically or select delegates who can accept or decline them. If it's Adele or if it's Alan, maybe these are an administrator that, again, you can put those uh, details in here. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to just say accept it all automatically. So it's nice and easy. Then we can click on to the delegation tab here and it's a mailbox. So because it's a mailbox, you've got obviously the classic mailbox options here. So you can send something as somebody else. So for example, I'm Bob sending as Alex. For example, if Alex has got a PA, the PA is sending it, it's sending as Alex. Send on behalf of. So this is, uh, for example, Miss Moneypenny on behalf of James Bond, for example, whereas send as, this would go as James Bond, you understand? If you want to give read and manage access to users, so perhaps you want somebody to be able to manage this mailbox. So again, you can set that up and again, you can add the users here. Now you will note that we have a service account in here, but also the admin as well. Again, you can add these messages members in there as well. So now that we've done that, again, that is the delegation tab. And then we've got the others tab here. So do you want to manage the mail tip? So this is like a little message that will appear at the top. Uh, I can say for bookings or for information. So I can say, you know, for uh, support, call 
555, 5555, just like in the movies. So you can put in that little kind of tooltip there, and you can see this is a tooltip. Now you'll notice that whenever you work in a, in a shared mailbox or a shared resource, sometimes the user interfaces can take a little bit of time, so just be aware of that. The email address, so if you want to change the name of that email address, you can do that here as well. So like I said, you can either come into Microsoft 365 or you can do this via Microsoft Exchange, whatever works for you guys, okay? So how do we use this and how do we actually book it then? Well, this is really simple, actually. We know the, e the email address of the actual resource here. So and that's basically all you need. So now if I flip over into Microsoft Outlook here, you can see that here in Outlook, of course, we've got our inbox and you've got your groups, you've got your Microsoft 365 groups, which of course are also shared resources as well. The only difference with a Microsoft 365 group is it's much more than just a shared mailbox. You get the shared calendar, planner, it can be extended to Microsoft Teams and have third party apps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my calendar and let's say that tomorrow I want to uh, have a meeting. First of all, I'm going to say this is, let's say, a team uh, meeting. I'm going to invite some attendees. So I'm going to say I want to bring in Megan. I want to bring in Adele. I want to bring in Alex. And I want to bring in myself. So I've got a user here called CDX. It then says, OK, now, is that all you want to bring in? Of course not. I want to bring in the Adams room. So this is the conference room Adams. So I'm just simply adding in a conference room because it's another resource. And you can see I can now set up my resources. So I'm just going to say that for tomorrow. So I'm going to say the 24th. And again, I'm going to say, hey, when do I want this resource to be available? So I'm going to say from 9 a.m. in the morning and we're going to just say, let's do 9 till 12. OK, so you can see the resource is going to be in conference room Adams. Again, really simple to do. Is this going to be a Teams meeting? Well, you could if you had a Teams equipment in there, of course. We also have some other options here, too. So if I go into the resource options again, you can type some information. Uh, what is the meeting going to be about? Of course, I can attach some files. So if it's a you know, plan or something that I want to discuss with my team, you can add all of these things in. You can bring in pictures and all kinds of things in here. So once you've done that, of course, you've got all your options and you can see here exactly who is available and who is going to be in that room. Just one thing, of course, the time zone. Make sure that you've got the correct uh, time zone there as well. Once you're ready to go, I can obviously either send that or, of course, you can send it as a draft. I'm happy for this to go. I'm going to go ahead now and schedule that meeting and just refresh this page and you can see that that meeting indeed has now uh, come in. OK, so we've now got the meeting in. There we go. So my meeting. And again, if this was a Teams meeting, of course, I could just simply go ahead and join that as well. What we looked at there was creating a resource mailbox and we looked at creating that mailbox in Microsoft 365. So again, in the rooms and equipment, you can see that we had some rooms. I went into the properties. And of course, I also discussed the fact that we it's a mailbox. Essentially, it's all managed in uh, Microsoft Exchange. I'm going to just move that there because I just realized I made a mistake. So yes, I'm going to just confirm that. And again, if you make changes, that was another point, actually. So if you may, if you want to change that at any point, if you want to, let's say I want to make this a little bit longer, it says, hey, you've edited this. Do you want me to go ahead and send that uh, update to everybody in the team? So I guess I will go and do that. I love that. That's so flexible, isn't it? So that I've shown you dealing with it in Outlook. 
I've also showed you how you can manage them in the Exchange Admin Center. Big question I get, Andy, what about licensing? So to use resource mailboxes, you need to have a Microsoft 365 license, okay? So the, the mailbox itself doesn't need a license, but your users need to license it. Last thing that I want to just mention, are obviously you've got the different resource types here. One useful tool is the fact that you can also export those resources as well. So if you want to, let's say, for example, export all of the resources, you can do that and you can either export them, the ones that you've got selected in the current list, or you can choose to export all resources. And of course, if you do export them, it exports them as a CSV file, which again is always great if you want to script things. So this is such a useful feature. And just a quick mention, by the way, if you want more details, then there's a little link here in the resource tab, and it will take you right through to the learn.microsoft.com article, and it will give you all the information, everything that you need to know. So there we have it, rooms and equipment in Microsoft 365. So there you have it, dealing with resources and equipment in Microsoft 365. Hey, listen, I really hope that you enjoyed that and you got a lot out of it. Just a quick mention, any questions, comments, as always, get those down below. It's always nice to hear from you. That's it for today. I'll be back in my studio next week. So you take care and I'll see you soon.